Hi, in this tutorial we are going to install iXtreme version 1.6 to a stock Hitachi 79 drive using Jungle Flasher 0.1.62 beta. I have the firmware pack for Jungle Flasher from Team Jungle installed to the firmware folder of Jungle Flasher. I have port IO32 installed and working correctly. I'm using an Enforce 4 SATA controller on board my PC to connect <coughs> the drive. Um, initially, when you're flashing a Hitachi drive, or a stock one at that, there are two steps you need to take in order to dump the firmware from the drive. The first one being mode B, which makes the drive visible in Windows, and the second one with the 79 drive is the 79 unlock method. What this does is actually unlock the drive ready for dumping, reading, etc. It used to be the case that the only available method for unlocking a 79 drive was to fit a uh, small mod chip, um, which most of you would know as a passkey um, to the drive. However, in recent times there was a hack released by Podger um, which allowed us to do the same thing except uh, through a software method. Uh, this is f a lot better and a lot less work. So this has been incorporated into Jungle Flasher and that's what we'll be using. So um, to start off we will send mode B to the drive. You can see that uh, I have the drive connected to my PC on port 09FO which is the primary port on my NVIDIA controller. You can see the properties of the drive are present in the name and the firmware revision so we know that's the correct drive so to start off um, I will send send mode B to the drive by clicking send mode B what you need to do is make sure that you have the drive tray opened at the point at which you send mode B so with the connectivity kit I shall <coughs> excuse me I shall uh, open the tray and then we'll click OK uh, the tray should automatically close, uh, send mode B will be performed and then Jungle Flasher will automatically scan for hardware changes to your PC. If you check the running log, um, you will see on the first attempt that it actually didn't find the Tashi drive. That's fine, you can actually uh, try again manually under the drive box within the Hitachi tab by clicking refresh. Again, it will scan for hardware changes, and there we go. On the second attempt, found drive J, CD slash DVD, Hitachi found. Okay, then we move on to the next step of unlocking the drive. Um, for this, you need the 79 unlock CD image, which you will find if you click the blue hyperlink within the 79 unlock section of the Hitachi tab. If you do click that link, it will take you to a uh, site where you can download the uh, disk image. It's a bin and Q file, so you will need something like ImageBurn to burn this to disk. Just burn it to CD using uh, full speed or something. Um, once you have that CD, of course, uh, all you need to do is open, put the CD in and close it. The 79 unlock function on the Tashi tab, there is also an option to do it automatically, which I recommend. So just make sure that box is ticked. And then once the CD is in, all you do then is press 79 unlock. If you watch the running lo log in Jungle Flasher, you will see that it ejects the CD after it's done with it. Um, and we have a confirmation message at the bottom that says it's done. So right now the in mode B and unlocked and ready to dump the firmware from. You will also notice that within the drive drop down list it's now present as a drive within Windows and has been assigned a drive letter. This is because we're using Win API as a function for the Hitachi drive. <coughs> you might notice that there's an, also an option which has been greyed out underneath the Win API option called use port IO. This is only for via controllers via SATA controllers with the drivers removed within Windows. It doesn't use Win API, so you will not be assigned a drive letter. However, for this tutorial we are not using that. I just thought I would mention that since it's quite important. From here we will go to flashing options and you can see that 
um, what we want to do there's various different functions you can choose within jungle flasher but what we want to do here is dump the drive since it's a 79 drive jungle flasher has automatically selected that for us and the transfer method has been chosen which is RAM upload so from there all we have to do under flashing options is click read to source which I've just done now it's dumped the firmware and prompted us to save it as a file in a folder which I created on the desktop called test um, so we save that there jungle flasher quickly moves to the firmware tool 32 tab just so the end user can actually check to see if the data that they dumped from their drive is present in the firmware that was dumped so what you can see here is the key is present the vendor model revision and firmware type are all correct as well as the OSIG shows correctly meaning the drive that we have is the drive firmware that we dumped sometimes it's a good idea to save the drive key as a key.bin so we can click that and we'll save that a key.bin in the same folder and this is all we need firmware tool 32 for so we move back to the Tashi tab within jungle flasher and the next step that we will take is to flash iXtreme what we do here is when you're flashing the hack firmware um, once you click the button what jungle flasher does is it compares the sectors of the hacked firmware to the sectors of the original firmware which you just dumped and having done that when it works out exactly which ones are needed to be flashed it will then uh, copy those and you'll see them in the sector list basically this is because the drive has to be flashed in a live state um, it's not like other uh, drives say a BenQ or a Samsung where you flash the entire firmware image all we are doing here is flashing the sectors that are needed to hack the drive so having said that I shall click flash hack firmware and you will see in the running log uh, the process and what's involved it dumps the flash so it prompts us to save that again which I'll save it just with a slightly different file name than the first time it does a flash stability test and has reported to us that the st stability test is stable what basically what this is is just flashes one sector uh, and then dumps the sector and reads it back and compares it to make sure that it stay excuse me that it was stable and it has so it recommends that we proceed with the flash as you can see in the sector list there are a number of sectors to be flashed in order to make this drive hacked this is what we will be doing here so uh, we will click continue and away we go it's flashing the sectors as needed it's done a right verify test dump the flash one more time read back and compared it and the right has been verified so the flash is complete basically your drive is now in a state where it's been hacked uh, running iXtreme version 1.51 the best thing to do just now to avoid any lockups within your Windows OS before you disconnect the drive just go up to where the drive section is and click remove what that does is actually uninstall the device from uh, Windows so you can actually safely um, turn the drive off without locking up your operating system Th this has happened to me a number of times and it's a very good feature within Jungle Flasher just make sure you do that before you turn it off um, once you've done that uh, and the drive is disconnected uh, hook it up to your Xbox and um, away you go uh, this tutorial is now over